Good morning and welcome to St Catherine's item for our service of Holy Communion today. My name is Tim Carter, I'm the vicar here at St Catherine's and at All Saints Wellington. I'm going to be leading and preaching this morning as we worship, read the Bible and uh, share communion. If you'd like to get bread and wine or something similar uh, to eat and drink whilst I'm uh, leading the communion part of the service, you're very welcome to do that. This is a Book of Common Prayer service. Uh, the words you'll need to join in with, both prayers and the hymn, will appear on the screen as we go through. But if you have a Book of Common Prayer at home and you'd like to follow along, uh, we're going to begin in a minute on page 237. That's page 237. And the reading this morning, the Bible reading, comes from Matthew uh, chapters 9 and 10. So if you want to be uh, getting a Bible and looking up that up in advance so you can read along with us, that would be great. So as I say, you're very welcome this morning, particularly welcome if you're dropping in with us for the first time or you're visiting. Uh, do make yourself known to us in the comments on the, on the video stream or drop us an email and say hi. It's lovely to have you with us. It's good to have everybody with us this morning. So a moment of quiet as we come together, as we prepare ourselves and as we gather to worship. And we pray, Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above or in the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them nor worship them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, and visit the sins of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and show mercy unto thousands in them that love me and keep my commandments. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless, who taketh his name in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days shalt thou labour, and do all that thou hast to do. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do no manner of work, thou and thy son and thy daughter, thy manservant and thy maidservant thy cattle and the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honour thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbour. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbour's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbour's wife, nor his servant, nor his maid, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is his. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. We continue in prayer. 
Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant Elizabeth, our Queen and Governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory, and that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honour and humbly obey her, in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth, ever one God, world without end. Amen. And the collect for the first Sunday after Trinity. We pray. O God, the strength of all them that put their trust in thee, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without thee, grant us the help of thy grace, that in keeping of thy commandments we may please thee both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now Rosemary is going to bring a Bible reading for us this morning. I'm reading from Matthew chapter 9 verse 35 and then on to chapter 10, the first eight verses. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. He called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus. Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles, or enter any, of the, any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Rosemary. Turning to page 240, we join together in declaring our faith in the words of the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, 
and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so we're going to have a look at this scripture that Rosie read for us. Let's, let's pray together. As we gather around the written word and listen to the spoken word, may we meet with the living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, in the time that Jesus was on earth, and for many centuries, leprosy really was a disastrous disease for those who contracted it and for their families. Uh, even if you didn't have leprosy, but just something that looked a bit like less leprosy, you were in trouble. Social distancing, self-isolating, shielding are nothing compared to what people with leprosy had to do. Go and live in leper colonies far from other human habitation. Cover every bit of skin. Ring a bell and shout unclean as they walked through the streets begging. No one understood how you caught it and there was no treatment. And that's why amongst all the other illnesses and diseases that Jesus healed, it's singled out as the only one named in this passage as a specific malady that Jesus' disciples were to cleanse people of. It's why so many times it's mentioned that Jesus healed people with leprosy in the gospel, in the accounts of Jesus' ministry and his life. Leprosy was one of the scourges of the time, and Jesus demonstrated his own power and authority to deal with it, and gave his followers the same power and authority. So, how do we feel when we read a passage like this, which is all about healing, when we're living through a time of pandemic, when we're living through a people, a time of people we love dying, of people suffering physically, emotionally, psychologically. Uh, we read about Jesus' healing ministry and his compassion on those who are hurting, on those who are like sheep without a shepherd. How do we feel about it? What do we think about this? Perhaps we don't believe that it actually happened. It's, it's a nice story. Perhaps it's a metaphor for Jesus making people feel better but bringing in a wholeness and bringing them into a new way of living, saving them from spiritual death? Or perhaps we think, well, that was then, but this is now. Jesus and those he sent did do miracles. They did heal people and free them from spiritual oppression. But that was a long time ago in a different place. We don't really expect to see the same things happen now. Perhaps it makes us angry. We believe that Jesus did heal those people then and, and could heal people now, but we don't see it happening. And that upsets us. Angry with ourselves for not having the faith to pray for these kind of healing. Angry with God for not healing those we love and see hurting every day. And summary, I, I wonder if reading a passage like this leaves us with the question, if Jesus could deal with leprosy, why isn't he dealing with COVID-19? And I have to say that I don't have a gold-plated answer, um, one that I'm 100% sure about, but I do have a few suggestions that I, I hope, I think, might help us to get a place at least being able to face the question. And I guess that there are a few things that I'm convinced of that mark out where I think the, the answers lie to this question. Firstly, I absolutely believe that Jesus does still have compassion, that he still looks on the sheep without a shepherd and cares deeply, that he finds the pain and suffering in the world gut-wrenching. It is Jesus' desire and intent that all of creation should come to be free of pain and hurt and to be whole. That's the first thing. The second thing is this, is that I do believe that Jesus did heal people then, actually, and so did his followers, and that by the gift and power of the Holy Spirit, people are still healed today, miraculously. I've seen it, 
I've heard people I tell, I trust tell me about times they've seen healings that they've been part of. The evidence, I believe, is there that it does still happen. That's the second thing. Firstly, Jesus has compassion. Secondly, healings are real. And thirdly, that actually even when Jesus was uh, ministering on earth, he didn't heal everyone. And he didn't heal them permanently. So there were still people living with leprosy in that time that Jesus didn't get to. There were many people who died who were not raised to life. And actually, even those that Jesus did heal, are all raised to life, actually died eventually of something else. This earthly life ends for everyone. Everyone dies. Even Jesus died. So I believe that Jesus has compassion still, that he heals still, but that on this earth, that healing isn't permanent. So, if healing isn't permanent or universal, even in Jesus' ministry, what is this passage all about? Well, to understand that, it seems to me that we need to look at what the acts of healing accompany. They aren't just done either by Jesus or by his disciples on their own. They come as a package with something. It says, Jesus proclaimed the good news of the kingdom and healed every disease and illness. And then the disciples were told, as you go, proclaim this message, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal those who are ill, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy. So you see, in both cases, the preaching of the kingdom came first, and the healings and the miracles came second. The healings and the miracles are not the thing. They are only signs that the kingdom has come near. The kingdom of heaven in which peace with justice is made real. The kingdom of heaven in which God's rule and reign are acknowledged by all people and the whole of creation. The kingdom of heaven in which broken lives and hearts are made whole forever. And while Matthew calls it the kingdom of heaven, that shouldn't lead us to think that it's just about something happening after we die. The whole point is that that kingdom was coming near. The rule and reign of God was breaking through in power on earth as it is in heaven. A process we pray for the fulfilment of every time we pray the Lord's Prayer. So Jesus told people about this kingdom and then he showed them what it's like. He sent his followers to tell people about this kingdom and then to show them what it's like. Later on, he told these same apostles to teach others to follow him as they did. So, we are to tell people what the kingdom of heaven is like, and then we're to show them. Freely you have received, freely give. It seems to me that um, we are moving in a difficult time, but also one of opportunity. Many of the kingdoms of the world are being shaken. Their foundations are being revealed to be made of sand. The future is uncertain and there's an opportunity to rebuild, but in a new way. So for instance, there's a lot of talk about rebuilding the economy um, around massive investment in infrastructure and renewable energy rather than rebuilding a carbon economy. Oh, I think that's a good thing, but. I think we have some, we in the church have something deeper to offer than that. We can proclaim the kingdom of God. We can be a sign of the kingdom of God in the way that we live, in the way we love, in the way that we serve, and in the way that we pray for people. And we can encourage that as as society is reformed post-COVID, that the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is at its heart. And I do believe that we can pray for healing for people. And sometimes we will see God working supernaturally to bring about restoration of physical, mental or emotional health. We can be bolder in our proclamation and in our actions. Jesus still looks on the world with compassion, on the sheep without a shepherd, lost, confused and vulnerable. And then Jesus mixes his agricultural metaphors a bit. 
The sheep are without a shepherd, so send the workers into the harvest field. I'm not a farmer, but even I know that's not right. But the point stands. See the community and its people through Jesus' eyes with love and compassion. Proclaim and heal, word and deed. Do stuff and tell people why. Point to Jesus and his coming kingdom and invite people to experience it for themselves. That, I believe, is how Jesus is dealing with COVID-19. Amen. As we reflect on that, as we commit ourselves to go and tell of God's glory and as we begin to prepare to come to the communion table, we're going to join together in singing, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. My thanks to David for recording this for us. Let's sing together. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church militant here on earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications, 
and to give thanks for all men. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love, we beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole counsel, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and indifferently minister justice, to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue, Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, that they might both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation gathered here, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And in a moment of quiet, we bring before God those who are especially dear to us. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Our service continues on page 251. Ye that truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith. Take this holy sacrament to your comfort. Make your humble confession to Almighty God. We pray together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these, our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God, it is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, in our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, 
Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. We pray together. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for me, preserve my body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. And we pray together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Just assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us. We are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. We most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, 
that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. And we say the Gloria together. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We're coming towards the end of our time in the service this morning. It's been really good to share with you. Uh, do say hello in the comments stream. And as I said, particularly if you're in New St Catharines, dropping in for the first time, um, it's lovely to have you with us. Do say hello in the comments or drop us an email and introduce yourselves. Um, it's been, been good to have you with us. Uh, I'm trying to remember who's on next week and I'm not sure. So anyway, look out uh, on the YouTube channel, on the Facebook pages and the website uh, for news of next week's service, which will be morning prayer. A final prayer of blessing. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen.